Today is August 30th and here's our buoy 10 update. I'm going to make this kind of short and sweet just because, man, I got a lot of work to do. Uh, I changed gears three different times today. I just kept marking a lot of fish. Not as many fish as I marked yesterday, but marked a ton of fish. And we were getting bit, so that's good. It was a step up from yesterday for sure, but not quite at the level that I was hoping for. Uh, we got bit on spinners, we got bit on bait, running triangle flashers, then later on when we, we have some really, really small tides right now, you know, two, three foot exchanges. And when there's no current like that and that river water is pumping down that 70 degree water, the 360 flashers tend to do a little bit better. So this morning on the incoming tide, I stuck with the triangles. We got bit fairly well on that. When it flipped around, started going out, just really slow, you know, max out go. My speed over ground was maybe two and a half, two seven, and that's giving us some throttle. Um, so it was, water was barely moving. So uh, we went to the 360 flashers and the Hildebrand 3.5 spinners, any color, frankly, we caught them on. Uh, light bulb, which is chartreuse green dot, we caught them on copper and pink. We caught them on the white pink dot. We caught them on red and white. We caught them on Mexican hat. It didn't seem to matter. Uh, just as soon as we would see fish, we would tend to get bit. Um, so, on all, yes, yesterday, grind today it was a grind again but we ended up keeping six let a couple go wild go some shorts whatnot lost a lot and frankly that's just because those 360 flashers on a barbless hook fishery i hate them i i really do not like running those 360 flashers but sometimes you have to and that skateboard just sits there and just wobbles in the current or the fish runs out runs out and then starts coming right back to the boat drops the hook right out of its mouth. So you tend to lose a lot of fish when you run them. It's just the name of the game. Um, breakaway flashers, they can only do so much. Backing your drags off, sometimes that helps. But really, I've actually found, found today that uh, trying to land these fish, acting as if it was, let's say, a blue marlin. You need to position the boat in a certain way when you're fighting a blue marlin, so that way you have a better chance of landing them. The blue marlin has a really long, obviously it has the bill on it, but it has a really hard mouth. And so you need to keep the boat positioned just at the side of the fish and track with it. And what that does is it keeps the hook placement in the corner of the fish's mouth. And I've noticed that with these 360 flashes when the fish comes up and bites, the rod's throbbing, throbbing, throbbing. If that fish doesn't turn and swim straight away, and they kind of come at you or even just at a slight angle, they keep their mouth open and are constantly shaking. And between this and that flasher, it just jiggles it right out. Unless, of course, they choke it. But um, when the fish comes up, it grabs it, I give it some throttle. Eventually, you know, I'll try and immediately turn the boat away from the fish to drive that line up against the side of the fish and drive that hook, keep it in the corner. And then we'll get all the lines clear, and then I'll try and position the boat so that I'm a little bit behind the fish, I'm trying to make my hands here. So fish is here, boat's here. I'm trying to keep the boat just a little bit behind the fish. So that way that line is constantly pulling back on the corner of the fish's mouth. And that actually seemed to help a lot today. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that every time we hook up with these things, but we're getting bit, so that's good. Um, as far as location, we caught them from the bridge on the Oregon side up to Tunk Point, even all the way up there to Rice and Sand Island, uh, up past Miller Sands. We caught them up at Portuguese Point on the Washington side, all the way on down to the bridge. I heard of some really good bites yesterday and this morning in the uh, Hammond area and Marker 1 in Waco. So what does that tell us? That means that there are fish choked in the entire system. I took a picture today of my Lowrance. I don't think I've ever seen that many fish on the graph. And guess what? We got zero bites. So it's frustrating for sure. It's just the nature of these soft tides. You just need to keep grinding it out until you find fish that's willing to become active. They're trying to acclimate into this 70 degree water. And that's pretty hard when they just came from 48 to 56 degree water. So it's taking them a little bit of time. So in this lack of current they just become static they become stagnant and that's why the 360 flashers work is because it's something active aggressive and it makes them chase um so yeah 
<sighs> After yesterday, today was good. But again, for the number of fish that we marked, we should have had more. Uh, most of the fish are still Chinook, not too many coho around, one here, one there. We kept one coho today and let one go. Uh, most boats I talked to had one coho at best. So there's plenty of Chinook and still waiting on some coho. All right, guys, time to head down to the boat and work on gear. Later.